Welcome to our course on Maven. In this lesson, I'm going to give you an introduction to the course, and we will talk about the course content, as well as what you will learn throughout the course. To begin, let's discuss Maven. Maven is a build automation tool. You may be familiar with something like Ant or Make, and those are both build tools. We use them to take our projects and construct some deliverable that we can then use or deploy. For example, we can create a jar or a war file from our Java projects. And Maven is a tool that automates that process. Now, the unique thing about Maven is it looks at building a project from a different paradigm. It emphasizes convention over configuration. And this really provides some additional benefits from the tool, and it delivers other features such as dependency management that really revolutionize how we build our projects. Maven is a project underneath the Apache Software Foundation umbrella. It's managed by the Apache organization, and they have been a stalwart within the Java environment since Java has become very popular. You know you're getting a quality project. It's managed by a great group of developers that are really promoting Java and have the best interest of the language in mind. It was created in 2003, so as of right now, it has been in existence for about 12 years. We also know it's a very stable tool that you can use and introduce into your toolbox. You don't have to be afraid that it's too cutting edge or maybe it's going to fall off. An investment in Maven is an investment within a stable tool that you can use to improve the way you build your applications. The current version of Maven is Maven 3.3.1. Early on in the 1.x series of Maven, there were some concerns and many developers established a love-hate relationship with the tool. Since Maven 2, that has really subsided and the tool has been viewed a lot more favorably and it's gained a lot more adoption, especially now that it can be integrated with other continuous integration tools. Let's talk a little bit about the content of the course. What are the different chapters we're going to be looking at? What are you going to be learning? First, we're going to start off by giving you an introduction to Maven. This is just kind of that general getting to know you piece with the software. We're going to give you key terms, the key goals you're trying to achieve with the software, the key components that make it up, a discussion of how it works, just so you have a little bit of knowledge of how the tool is going to help you build software. From there, we're going to expand and you're going to learn about dependency management and dependencies within Maven. We'll move on to discuss the life cycle, the goals, the plugins, and this is really how Maven performs its different actions against your project. So how it builds an artifact from your simple Java project. Next, we'll talk about archetypes, which are really project templates that can help us generate projects more quickly and to create some reusable project that we can share across our organization. Finally, we'll talk about the M2E Eclipse plugin, and this is some integration within Eclipse that helps us when we're working with Maven. These are just some of the topics that we will cover and some of the things that you'll learn about throughout the course. Obviously, there are a lot more details under each one of these topics, and we're going to really dive in to looking at the tool and working a lot of hands-on demonstrations and examples. So let's talk about who this course is for. This course is primarily for intermediate Java developers. Now, if you're an advanced beginner, you'll also do fine within this course. While Maven is targeted towards all languages, it is primarily a Java tool. In theory, it could be used with something like .NET or C-sharp, and that wouldn't be a problem, but the ecosystem has really lent itself to Java developers. The tool is very good for people that have a large project or a portfolio of projects that they need to manage and standardize. It can really add some organization and kind of just add a layer of consistency to these portfolios or large projects. Now, it can be used within any size project, and I would even advocate for that, but the individuals that will see the real benefit are these large project managers or portfolio managers. Also, if you are a heavy user of third-party libraries, 
So I'm talking to the Spring users, the Hibernate users. These frameworks that have other dependencies upon dependencies upon dependencies, this is the tool for you and you really need to take this course and dig in and see how it's going to help you manage those third-party frameworks that you introduce into your applications. So what do you need to know before taking this course? Well, the first item is a general Java background. You should have some experience building classes, compiling classes, and running Java applications. We will not be delving very heavily into, you know, we're going to create this class and constructors. It's more just making simple test classes that we'll use throughout the course. Also, any experience you have with Java IDE, such as Eclipse, we use Eclipse throughout the course, mainly because it's the most popular Java IDE, that's going to be beneficial as we work throughout the lessons. Next, XML is very important throughout this course because we use XML to configure Maven. You will see that we have a pom.xml file, and that's the configuration file read by Maven, and it primarily uses XML. We will cover more on that later in the course, but just know that XML experience is beneficial. And then finally, I have listed command line experience. Now, this isn't a heavy prerequisite, but we will be using the command line for a portion of the course, and any familiarity you have issuing commands via the command line will help you throughout the course. I'm really excited about this course. I think it's gonna be a great learning experience for you. You will find I don't like to PowerPoint you to death. There's a lot of hands-on demonstrations because I find that's the best way to learn a new technology.